Just quickly before we get started, I'm trying something different this time around by upscaling all the games using Desmumi X432R. The games are running at four times the native res with anti-aliasing effects enabled, so they in no way represent what they would look like or how they'd perform on a real DS. Because of this, I won't be commenting on any frame rate stuff in this video. Capcom's Okami Den is a beautiful DS game. Released in 2010 in Japan and in 2011 everywhere else, this game has an absolutely stunning art style with a graphics engine to back it up. Being an Okami game, I knew that this game would look good, but I was still taken aback by its pleasing blend of polygonal and sprite-based graphics. This is actually my introduction to the Okami series, and while it seems like a solid game from the little amount I played, it isn't my kind of game, so I'm really just here to marvel at the visuals. It's definitely one of the best looking games on the system. Double O Seven Bloodstone from 2010 is the handheld counterpart of the third-person cover shooter. Just like the bigger version, it's not a particularly outstanding game, but it does have its charms. Where it does excel is with its visuals, boasting large, high-poly environments and some pleasing visual design. Though there are some muddy-looking brown levels, the injection of color and detail really characterizes the better-looking environments. Driving, shooting, and sneaking through its variety of levels is a bit of a spectacle considering what the DS is capable of. Even if the controls are a bit loose, and the gameplay is a bit bland. Small details like these water reflections elevate the whole experience, and its attempt at cinematic cutscenes is just adorable. Ah, you must be Miss Hunter's friend. She tells me you're quite skilled at Texas Hold'em. Care for a game? Your casino, you do. Enjoy the game, gentlemen. I'll be watching from over here. Race Driver Grid from 2008 is, again, a handheld adaptation of a larger game. Codemaster's stylish racing game was adapted for the DS by Firebrand Games, and the results are commendable. All the levels and cars just look great, particularly in the car select screen where they could hone down the detail. I couldn't really get used to the car physics, but it's a decent little game. It's fascinating to me that a simulation-esque racer was even attempted on the DS, and it's even more fascinating to me that it isn't awful. Remember when they made that Aragon movie? Yeah, me neither. I saw this thing at the movies and I still don't really remember it. Turns out it had a tie-in video game released on basically everything, including of course the Nintendo DS. This 2006 3D action adventure game boasts some impressive visuals and there aren't a lot of effects or tricks going on, but it hosts a good looking world with decent looking characters. It reminds me of the N64 with the way everything looks and moves. Some areas are obviously better looking than others, but altogether its tech and graphics are notable, particularly as the game was released earlier in the DS's life cycle. I had a friend who actually finished this game, and I asked him if it was good, and he had this to say. Yes. Fantasy Star Zero is another one of those games just like The Wizard of Oz, Okami Den, and Cop the Recruit that's so insanely head of the curve to the point where it almost needs to be seen to be believed. Released in 2008 by Sega and developed by a Sonic team of all devs, nothing I say will really do justice to what this game achieves with its graphical prowess. Just marvel at how densely detailed this all is. It plays like a fairly standard JRPG grindfest, so I didn't spend too much time with it, but if this seems like your sort of thing, then pick it up and prepare to be amazed. And that's five more. In the description, I've linked a straw poll, which is just to gauge whether you guys want to see upscaled game footage, native res footage, or a mix of the two. So if you have a preference, hit that up and help me refine these videos to be the best they can be. I'm just going off script here and... I want to thank you all because I've gained over 5,000 subscribers since my last video, which is just absolutely surreal to me. Thank you all for supporting me and supporting this goofy little channel and... I hope in the future I can make more entertaining videos. If you have any constructive criticism or feedback or anything, 
let me know. I want to I want to know what you want out of my channel. And with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for everything. Have a good one.